Hey guys, my friend attended a Microsoft interview just last week, and he was asked two questions. Just two questions, two programming questions. The first was to sum. You can see that right here. It's captioned above, and the second problem was n queens. That is this problem right here. So if you know how to solve it, you've got a very real shot at getting into Microsoft. And even if you don't, it's still a very solid and very fundamental dynamic programming question. So let's just get into it. Okay, guys, n queens is the name of the problem. You're given an n by n board. In how many ways can you place n queens such that none of them attack each other? Now remember, a queen can attack any piece that's in the same row as the queen, in the same column as the queen, or in the same diagonal. There are two diagonals. The only valid combinations are those you see on your screen right here. Now, guys. Take a while. Try to solve it for yourselves. The link is in the description below. Once you are done, head on back, and I'll give you a small clue. Now imagine we've got a blank four by four board. We've got to place four queens on this board. Say we place them one by one. This is the configuration we get initially. This configuration is invalid, and that's because all four are on the same row. However, do we really need to place all four queens to get to know this? The moment we place the second queen, we know that every future combination will be invalid, and that's because these two queens are on the same row. This is the essence of dynamic program. We are not simply going to brute force the answer by generating each and every single possibility. Instead, we are going to add certain rules that makes the program smarter. And then we're going to backtrack based on these rules. Whenever we place a queen, there are four parameters we've got to keep in mind. One is its row, the next is the column, the next is the diagonal, and finally the anti-diagonal. That is the diagonal from the top left to the bottom right, and the diagonal from the top right to the bottom left. These are four parameters we've got to keep a track of. The moment we place a queen, we're going to ensure that the row the column and the diagonals become invalid that is to say no other queen can be added in those rows now it's pretty straightforward for rows and columns the ij values are going to give you the rows and columns respectively how are you going to identify the two diagonals that's what you guys have to figure out and once you do you're almost done with the problem you've almost solved it for yourself let's have a look at this diagonal right here the coordinates are 0 0 1 1 2 2 3 3 if you subtract the i and j values you're going to get 0 for each one of these four elements that's why this entire diagonal can be characterized by the value 0 let's have a look at this diagonal right here that is 1 0 2 1 and 3 2 if you subtract the j value from the i value you're going to get a result of 1 this diagonal is characterized by the value 1 any diagonal that runs from the top left to the bottom right can be characterized by subtracting the j value from the i value anti diagonals however follow a slightly different rule in this case the four coordinates are 3 0 2 1 1 and 0 3 here If we add the i and j values, we're going to get three. So anti-diagonals are characterized by the i plus j values. The moment we place a queen into a position, we're going to exclude that row, that column, and the diagonal and the anti-diagonal. We can also make the program a little smarter. In order to place four queens on a four by four board, each queen has to be on a different row. that's why we don't have to keep a track of the row we can simply move the row down by one in each and every iteration say you've got a blank 4 by 4 board now when you place a queen on the first position you've got to exclude the zeroth row the zeroth column and the two diagonals the first diagonal is going to be i plus j that is zero and the second diagonal is going to be i minus j again zero this means that you're not going to be able to place a queen on any one of these positions now on the second row we can see that these two positions are invalid that's why we place it in the third position instead 
the moment we do so we find that we are not able to proceed any further that's because all the subsequent positions are invalid which is why we begin backtracking now that we know the third position in the second row is invalid we move on to the fourth position now again we are unable to place it in any position that's why we revisit our previous step and we move our queen to the next position now we add 1 to our set of invalid columns we add 1 minus 0 that is 1 to our set of invalid diagonals and we add 1 plus 0 that's 1 again to our set of invalid anti diagonals when we move on to the second row there's only one valid position that is position 4 we place our queen there and as we continue the program we can see that the third queen will be placed in the first position of the third row and the fourth queen will be placed in the third position of the last row sorry this is one valid combination which is why our count increases by 1 the moment the number of queens is equal to n it becomes a valid combination once this program finishes executing we will find that for a 4 by 4 board there are two valid combinations this is the code right here and the beauty of this program is that you don't need to maintain a two dimensional array or a matrix we are going to recursively call this function gen if row count equals to n we return count plus 1 this is our exit clause whenever we've got recursive function calls we need to have an exit clause otherwise it's going to call itself infinite times here our exit clause says if the number of queens is equal to n then we increment our count by 1 now we run j loop from 0 to n our row count keeps incrementing anyway so we simply have to check the columns if j is in the set of invalid columns or if row count minus j is in the set of invalid diagonals or if row count plus j is in the set of invalid anti diagonals then we simply continue that's because this configuration is invalid if that's not true we add these values to column d1 and d2 respectively following that we call the same function with the updated parameters now remember the whole point of backtracking is that we revert back to our previous state that's why we delete the values we've just added the moment that function call is over finally we return count let's see if this code works compile and test sample has been passed and once we hit submit each and every input has been accepted guys that's the solution to n queens it's a very popular problem it's been asked everywhere just have a look at the caption and the thumbnail i hope you like this video i hope you learned something from it If you did, hit the three buttons that pop up on your screen right here. It's been Vivek, and I'll see you all next time.